the, the tension that existed between you, between Hooper and Quint. And it was said that uh, that tension was not fake. It, it existed on the set. And I don't know if that's because Robert Shaw was a method actor and wanted to uh, have that carry over or what? But you have to straighten that out for us. Um, Robert was the single most powerful personality I've ever met. And when he was alone, when he was off the set, he was the most graceful and generous gentleman. The closer we got to the set, Dr. Ha Dr. Um, Jekyll became Mr. Hyde, and and became uh, and I became his target, and to the point that Michael Chapman, the operator, who was really a cinematographer, said to me once, "What is this Robert Richard show that's going on?" And I said, it's, it's just something that Robert does. But he had my number, psychologically. He told me that I couldn't do things that I could easily have done. Like, a, you can't do uh, 50, 50 push-ups. Like, <laughs> and you, you, you can't jump from the top of the ship to this, the ocean. And I couldn't. And I could certainly do both of those things. And, but in private, Robert was an amazingly talented and generous guy. And one night, I remember, um, we were sharing bunks during a break. And he said, I know, I'll play, I'll play the ghost to your Hamlet if you play the ghost to my leer. Not the ghost, the, the fool to my leer. And you're, dealing, and and you're dealing with one of the greatest Shakespearean actors. And I said, you got it, but not for 10 years. And he said, why? I said, because you'll blow me off the stage, that's why. And that we would have done that had he not died. We would have done it. He once read me the entire script of The Man in the Glass Booth that he wrote. That was awesome. And it's, it's nothing compared to what he did that day. He had seen that character himself. And at, at the end, when he says, children of Israel, children of Israel, if he had chosen you, you also would have followed where he led. At that moment, I looked up, and the entire cast and crew and Stephen were at the windows of the boat, Orca. All of us had stopped working, and Stephen wasn't saying anything except go on. And it was a privilege and it was an insight into him. And if you notice, if you know more of him than just that film, you know that he had a true uh, odd, neurotic, competitive urgency so that um, it's why the on-screen hostility began as, as it did. Yeah. And it, it's also because, wait, um, it's also because when, when he did that moment where I come in and he takes my hands and says, these are not working man's hands. Yeah. Uh, You've been counting money all your life. Yeah. He said, uh, I had to, he, he told me to um, tie a certain kind of knot. And I'm, I am not Matt Hoover, to right. say the least. <laughs> but he, he learned how to do that. And then I tossed it back and landed 
his face, <laughs> looked at me with the look that said, you've made the worst mistake of your life. 